Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is May the 5th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the best reigns in recent history, in any weight class, in boxing, was Mike Tyson's reign as heavyweight champ before the Buster Douglas debacle. Right, Tyson cleans up the era. Understand, Michael Spinks fights Larry Holmes twice. Spinks, one of history's underappreciated fighters. Understand, this was a light heavyweight, not a cruiserweight, a light heavyweight challenging an unbeaten heavyweight champion, several year heavyweight champion, who was on the verge of history. Uh, this would be like Bivol challenging Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury, right? And understand, Michael Spinks beats Larry Holmes officially twice. Now, I agree. This is one of those gray areas in boxing. There are those who believe Holmes wins both matches. Certainly, he wins the first one. Let me raise my hand. I'm among those. But understand what Mike Tyson did. Tyson beats both men. Right? He beats both men. He also beats other champions. When Tyson came along, you thought there was a paradigm shift, right? Tyson does it without a lot of jabs. He'd slip your punches. He would come inside. Back then, we had a bias. We hadn't seen a great small heavyweight who was champion since Joe Frazier, right? So Foreman beats Frazier. Then we go through the 1970s. Right? Foreman, big man, Ali, big man, Larry Holmes, big man, right? That's the way it was. Then along comes Tyson. Everyone was talking about Tyson. Everyone. Tyson was popular. Tyson was also young, right? He was the youngest champion at that time. And so, understand, Tyson has a very dear place in my heart, right? Now, all of that said, I just want people to understand that I know there's a buzz right now, and it's a big buzz, about Mike Tyson in a recent workout, showing fast hands, looking explosive, right? You can imagine that buzz is particularly loud right now, because hand speed has been a little bit devalued in the heavyweight division, right? Tyson's hands right now look faster than Anthony Joshua's hands. They look faster than Deontay Wilder's hands. Not only that, but we know Tyson Fury has a problem with quick-handed smaller guys, having been dropped by the fighter he contends gave him the toughest fight of his career, Steve Cunningham. Right? So, as you can imagine, people want to believe that a guy with a gray beard, a guy in his 50s, right, might be able to make a comeback, might be able to beat some of these bigger guys. Let me just say this, though, and I'm going to have to throw cold water on it. Right? Hand speed's only part of boxing. Offense is only part of boxing. The fighters who succeed at a later age in boxing are the guys who actually have boxing skills, in my opinion, that don't depend as much on reflexes. So let me name two guys who I thought aged beautifully in the sport. George Foreman, right? Foreman wasn't quick-handed, but what Foreman was was defensively savvy. He'd come in like this, right? Foreman would lean on you. 
foreman covered up. He didn't need the reflexes of a 21-year-old to be successful. Another guy was Floyd Mayweather. Right? Mayweather had his head behind his shoulder. Mayweather would lean. Mayweather was interesting. He'd have body parts between you and parts of his body. So to get to his body, throwing your right hand, you had to deal with his entire arm, right? You had to somehow find a way to get around his bicep. So just the form, even as Mayweather's reflexes dimmed, just the form would protect Floyd, right? The know-how that comes with experience the stuff that made him what we call a KG veteran was able to carry him in later fights. Right? Mayweather used to be a freak athlete, but the key is from day one. Floyd Mayweather focused on defense, didn't he? Right? Even when he was the freak athlete fighting Hinata Hernandez, even when he had the cat quick reflexes, Mayweather was always about defense, right? George Foreman always had a great jab, always knew how to slow you down, didn't he? Throwing that jab. Foreman, a big puncher, didn't need to have rough and tumble fights. He could soften you up before he finished you. He could keep you on the outside. Those are the guys that age well. Right? Vladimir Klitschko. Older Vladimir Klitschko. The one with Emmanuel Stewart. Great jab. Kept you outside. Vlad would lean. Right? He's throwing the jab and he would lean. He wasn't relying on a young man's reflexes at that point. He'd been in the sport long enough to know how to put in place a form that even when he misjudged the timing, the other fighter didn't have much of a chance to really hurt him. Now Mike Tyson's different. Mike Tyson, as Emmanuel Stewart himself said when he was alive, for the young man's game, Right? Tyson would slip your jab. In other words, the punches are coming. Mike didn't necessarily have his hands up above his head, right? He has his hands here. Tyson would slip your jab, get inside, then let his hands go. Use his hand speed. Tyson's defense relied heavily, heavily on reflexes. Now you saw the reflexes starting to dim when he fought Buster Douglas. One of the keys to that legendary fight is the effectiveness of Buster Douglas's jab. Tyson has a very hard time slipping it. Gets hit so much in the face that his eye his his eye swells up in that fight. Well, let's overlook his two losses to Evander Holyfield. Let's overlook his loss to Lennox Lewis. Understand Tyson at the end was losing to average fighters, right? Average fighters and was getting hit a lot in those matches, right? The speed, quickness, reflexes of young Tyson were long gone by the end of Mike Tyson's career. Now this is professional sports, understand. Only the best of the best are able to compete on a world-class level. Mike Tyson's level of fitness in his close to mid-50s might be the kind that can impress people at the local gym. Right? I have no doubt that, you know, if Tyson shows up at a regular boxing gym, and he's fighting club fighters. Mike Tyson probably is too athletic and fast and savvy for them. Has too much experience for them. Can live off his reflexes and can destroy most of them. 
right? But at a world class level, right? I just don't see how Mike Tyson would be able to deal with, let's say, the jab of an Anthony Joshua. Right? I'll agree if Tyson gets inside, punching power is the last to go, even though at this point he's in his 50s, right? <laughs> even the people who believe punching power is the last to go have to wonder about Tyson's punching power in his mid 50s. But the point is, Anthony Joshua could, in my opinion, throw jabs on Mike. Because Mike's not defensively blessed, if Mike slips the jab, Right? Joshua might be able to hit him with hard shots. Understand, too, their fights. The Bone Crusher Smith fight. Where a guy who knew how to clinch just clinched Tyson every time he collapsed the pocket. That blueprint's out there. Now, I'm not saying that Joshua is where he'll be in a few years. Joshua's still learning certain things. Right? But, Let's just say Joshua has a series of tapes that he could look at. The Lennox Lewis tape, the Buster Douglas tape, the Bone Crusher Smith tape, right? Where he could figure out how to do certain things to slow down Mike Tyson, right? Tyson Fury, one of the secrets to his game is the fact that Fury is actually a great inside fighter. Tyson slips the jab, comes inside on Tyson Fury. You know what? Tyson Fury can hold his own against Mike Tyson on the inside. I encourage people to look at Tyson Fury against Derek Chisora and understand Chisora got on the inside against Vitaly Klitschko, didn't he? Chisora almost beat David Hay. Had Hay exhausted by the fifth round of that fight. Of course, punching power is a beautiful thing. Hay was a gifted puncher. We remember the knockout. Right? But understand, Chisora is a guy who really forces an opponent to fight. He tried doing that with Tyson Fury. He came inside. Tyson Fury was the better fighter inside. What happens if Tyson Fury is able to move away from Mike Tyson, pop him with a bunch of jabs, treat him like a 53-year-old who's trying to get back in the game? Then let's say Tyson slips inside, right? That's the Tyson, Mike Tyson. Let's say Mike Tyson slips inside on Tyson Fury, right? Tyson Fury is the kind of guy who can tie him up. He's the kind of guy who could shorten his punches and start to work Mike Tyson. Let me say this too. And you see this if you play basketball at the park. You know, the first few points of the game, hey, guys in their mid-50s, let me raise my hand, can hang. We can hang. Right? Whoa. Suddenly the lungs start to go when you're in the middle of the game. Right? Mike Tyson might look great in round one, round two, round three. I'm just telling you, 53-year-olds in round seven, eight, and nine might look like Bernard Hopkins looked at the end. You remember the fight where he gets knocked out of the ring? Right? I believe it's his last fight. Right? That's the problem with old age. You know, you look great early, the stamina's not there. If you don't have the form that a George Foreman, a Floyd Mayweather, a Vladimir Klitschko had, right, you're going to have problems in fights because your reflexes aren't what they were when you were a young man. When you were a young man, you have a huge margin of error. When you're an older man, the reflexes aren't there, so you've got to be on it. If you miss the cues and start getting hit, guess what? It's over. I love Mike Tyson. I'm not expecting a world-class comeback. I'm privately hoping Mike is just, you know, working out and stuff like that to remind people who he was. Right? Kind of like this Michael Jordan documentary. I'm hoping Mike's just reminding people who he was and drawing attention to whatever he's doing in business these days. But if I see Mike Tyson get in the ring against a guy with a good jab, Dylan White, 
for crying out loud. If I see Tyson get in the ring against a guy with a good jab, who's going to keep him outside, right? Who's not going to be afraid of him. Understand, in the 80s, guys looked afraid before the opening bell. Right? Some guys actually were confident before the opening bell, got hit with a few Tyson shots, and then looked afraid. Right? Other guys weren't afraid, tried to look tough. You remember Trevor Burbeck getting off the canvas against Mike Tyson without his balance? Looking like he'd been hit by a Mack truck? You remember that fight? Well, now young guys are not going to be afraid. Right? They're not. They're going to view him as a senior citizen. They're going to view him as an opportunity to put an extra shine on their legacy. Right? So I have no doubt Tyson looks great for a 53-year-old. If a fight is announced where Tyson is fighting a guy with a good jab, right? A young guy who can fight inside and who can use length, right? A Tyson Fury. Right? If a fight's announced against someone like that, I'll be taking the younger guy, right? I'll privately hope that Tyson wins the fight because that's just a better storyline. But I'll understand that the odds are very stacked against a 53-year-old, even one who looks good in a short workout. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.